What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about the Gecko Badger. The Gecko Badger is by Nikolai Slobin. He basically wrote a tool that lets you um, backtest, import, and also what they call a brute force searcher. So this is a three tool uh, combined into one thing. I tried it out and it works pretty good. Even though I personally don't like backtesting that much, I know a lot of you guys do, and you guys are looking for tools to uh, replace what was written by XFFFF, Gecko Backtest Tool, which was a great tool, except the problem is he pretty much left um, the Gecko open source scene uh, back in May 24th, 2018. That was the last update he made, the last commit he made on the Gecko backtest tool, and he pretty much left the overall Gecko scene around that time as well. His tool still works if you use the older version of Gecko, I think it's uh, 0.5, that still works with his backtest tool. But if you don't want to run two versions of Gecko, I would definitely recommend using the Gecko Batcher. So, how do you install the Gecko Batcher? That's another thing I like about this tool. It's so much easier to install compared to the Gecko Backtest tool because the Gecko Backtest tool, again, is written in Perl. So it's a completely different language than the Gecko Trading Bot is written in. The Gecko Trading Bot is written purely in Node.js. When I was playing with the Gecko Backtesting tool last year, I had to install Perl and go through the whole setup process, which was a pain in the butt. So I'm glad that this tool is written in Node.js. You don't have to install anything other than the tool itself. Uh, install some uh, dependencies and you're good to go. Well, let's just quickly cover what it looks like in terms of the installation process. So this is what is written here on GitHub and it's basically you install Gecko first and then run npm install. I mean I know for X Mike his instructions are npm install dash dash only equal production. So you're only installing production level dependencies. So in here, he didn't specify that. That's your preference. And the next thing is download all candles need, uh, you need via the importer. You don't actually have to do anything here because you can actually use the Gecko Batcher to download stuff for you as well. So you can really skip step two. The next thing is to run Gecko via the UI. So that's something that I don't really do often because as you can see from my most of my videos, I cover 90% command line these days. So, but I do run it in UI once in a while, and it's really easy. Just run it, no gecko dash dash UI, and now start up the gecko UI like here, like I have here, and you basically see it. You basically need to have two windows essentially, right? So this one is running gecko UI in this terminal window, and then here, this is where I was installing and going through the process of uh, setting up the gecko batcher. Basically, I just kept this running and then followed the rest of the instructions. So. Rush instructions was obviously again like a copy the config file. So again, strategy settings will be taken from here. So, so this is where Gecko Batcher looks into the config file and uses the strategy settings that was set up for the particular strategies that X might have in the strategies fo uh, folder in the in the strategies folder. So I actually didn't even really look into this. Obviously, I know what's inside, but <laughs> I just followed instructions and. The whole point was just to get it to get the Gecko Batch to work. So you can play around with this a lot more, obviously. If you have a particular strategy that you want to use, you would definitely want to make sure that it's inside the, the strategy settings is inside the config file. Additionally, he added two more um, things you want to change. So inside Gecko Web Routes Base Config, this is really part of the UI. So you can change the config.debug to true and it's for better performance. So it's really just going into base config and just going to config.debug, apparently true, very simple. So the next thing is um, increase server.timeout at gecko web slash server.js to avoid a timeout error if the strategy runs for a long time. He specified that this happens for small size candles, what I normally call lower time frame candles. So something like maybe one minute candles, five minute candles, you'll definitely come across this error. In addition, I think it also comes down to more your strategy, not just the candle sizes. It's your strategy, it's your strategy, the duration, the back, you know, the back test duration. If you're back testing for a very long time frame, uh, and your strategy, what kind of uh, calculation it uses, how many plugins it uses, and obviously your um, 
processing power that you're using to actually run these backtests. If you're running this on a 10 year old netbook like I have uh, at home here, you would definitely want to up this number to like at least five or 10 minutes. I have upped it in the past, but if you look carefully though, first of all, at server.js, you go to edit server.timeout. He actually set it up so that it's, it's reading from either config.api.timeout or 120,000, you could say probably like nanoseconds, because basically this is about two minutes. So the fact is, it's reading from the config.api.timeout first. And that, if you scroll all the way to the top here, is actually being read from view this UI config. So I actually went over there and opened this file. And in here, you look at the timeout, it's actually, it even tells you timeout 120,000, which is equal to two minutes. Again, up, up this to like five minutes if you're running on a slower computer or if you're running a strategy that has a lot of different indicators as using the calculations is pretty crazy. Or if you have a date range that is maybe several months long or perhaps even longer than that, and um, the time frame is very low. So once you set that, which I actually did by the set again, because I didn't, this is just really the test to make sure that Gecko Batch works. So you can then uh, go back to the Batcher folder again. This is already assuming that you already get clone Gecko Batcher into uh, your computer. And then again, in here you have to do the npm install to install the dependencies for Gecko Batcher. After that, same step here, pretty much. Sample-config, copy that to config.js. But note that this is a different config file. So if you look at config file inside Gecko Batcher, it's a completely different config file. So first thing you notice is that the config.gecko path, they need to know where Gecko, where your version of Gecko is. So obviously my version of Gecko is stored in the folder modded Gecko because that's what I call my version of Gecko is as and um, it's actually stored on the same on the same root level. So basically they are um, the modded gecko and gecko batcher is stored in the same root level. So let's say the root level is A. So and then <clears throat> modded gecko is in was one level down. So basically what this here the dot dot telling you to do is go back up to one directory up where the root folder is and then come back down to modded gecko. Very straightforward. Glad that uh this is clearly defined to let you know how Gecko Batcher is interacting with Modded Gecko. And then the rest are pretty straightforward, right? This is a URL that you use to access your Gecko UI and then the parallel queries. This is depending on how powerful your computer is. Is it default to two? You can do more of your, if you have more cores in your computer. So let's say if you have an i7 or i9, you could throw in like four or maybe even eight. And then from here out, you can configure the different trade pairs that you want to um, test in. So same thing for the date range. So date range, originally in the original config file, the sample config file, it is actually, um, there were two date ranges. So, but note that, you know, only, only one date range for import mode allowed if parallel query is greater than one. From here, you can configure the, um, the different paper trader settings, basically the same thing you get to configure in uh, the regular um, Gecko config file. Basically looks very similar. And then in here it has specific options for Bat, uh, backtest batcher, the, the methods it uses, in terms of, I guess this would be like the, the indicators it uses, RSI, MACD, st uh, stock RSI, and CCI, and then the brute force searcher will actually search through a particular um, strategy. In this case, it actually uses um, this RSI, and it just tells you the range it's ser searching through. So you can see the interval, it's searching from uh, 8 to 10, and then the lows and highs. The lows is 24 to 26 with a step of one. So this goes from 24, 25, 26, and the high is going from 70 to 80 with a step of one. So 70, 71, 72, 73, all the way up to 80. So pretty straightforward this stuff. And you can see the different settings is that's also using. So I'm kind of wondering too, though, even though it does say that it would use the strategy settings inside the gecko config file, it also included some of the strategy settings in here. So maybe I guess in case your um, your config file inside Gecko doesn't have these settings, they'll use it from here. This is all you need to do to get um, Gecko Batcher to work. So at this point, this is pretty much what I did. So after I copied the config file, I just ran the Batcher, like I said, it's right here. 
when I first ran it, it says only one day range allowed in uh, mode import because my parallel query was bigger than one. So I went back into the config file for Gecko Batcher, changed it to one day range. And then I just ran node import dash g config.js. And it started importing the candle data for these two particular trade pairs. Poloniex, for some reason, was a whole lot faster than Binance. Binance probably took like 20 minutes, maybe longer. Um, probably like 30 minutes for like a month of data. The good thing is they do run in parallel, so you can be downloading both at the same time. The import process compared to what you see in the GIF file in here, the animated GIF file in here, is a lot, lot slower. So granted, again, the GIF file here is showing you that it's only importing one day of data. So uh, obviously, yes, importing one day is a lot faster. So after I've done the importing, I started running the brute force searcher. So again, this searches for the best parameters you should use for your particular strategy. So based on just the very defaults that it has, there was already 792 combinations. So I'll tell you the start time, March 19, I mean March 31st, I ran at 2.45 p.m. It took 23 minutes to complete um, the brute force search. But when it was done, I was able to go into the brute force CSV file inside the results folder inside Gecko Batcher, and I can see the RSI method, the different parameter settings that was used to get the best possible performance. The performance wasn't very good overall, but you can see some of them had like 20 something percent gains, which wasn't too bad. Just a very basic RSI strategy for one month period. This is something you guys should definitely take a look into if you are interested in figuring out what's the best parameters to use in your particular strategy. So the next thing I ran after I ran the brute force switcher was the backtest batcher. So in the backtest batcher basically is batch backtest tool for multiple strategies and pairs. If you already optimized, let's say with the brute force searcher, you already optimize your parameters. Now you can use the backtest batcher to uh, run it through multiple trade pairs to see which one you want to run your strategy on. And Again, it's very simple to, to use and set up, right? It's like basically just run no batch dash t config.js. And then found that there was 32 combinations and it ran through that in 57 seconds. So in here, you can see that there were different uh, methods that were used. It goes back to your config file, whatever you can, uh, set in the config file you'll use. That's the ones you'll use. And then it'll go to uh, use on different trade pairs, Zcash and USDT BTC and different exchanges. There's two different RSI methods, there's two different, um, and then there's the stock RSI and CCI. So those are the four uh, strategies that it used. It pulls from the method settings from the batcher and some from the Gecko TLML file. So within the Gecko UI, you know that it uses the TLML files to uh, set the parameters and you can change it here uh, to set the default parameters. And you can change it live on the UI if you want to change the backtest. It's obviously faster if you want to change the default settings to just set it on the TLML file. And that's where it's pulling from to get the information on some of these strategies. So I have to say, this is a pretty straightforward um, backtest tool with import and brute force all combined in one. And the code is very efficient. I mean, you really don't see that much in here that, you know, um, that is hidden from um, from view. I mean, basically, you you know, like these three are the main uh, JavaScript files that you're running, and then you can see this. Um, and then if you go into the core of it, you can see the different uh, tools it uses. But there's really not much in here. This is a very very clean setup in terms of uh, what it's doing. It's really relying a lot on Gecko to provide a lot of this calculation, but at the same time, is uh, combining all that. And, uh, all that calculation into a CSV for you to go through and understand what is your best uh, strategy to use. So that is my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think about a Gecko Badger. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. As always, I am on Patreon. I truly appreciate it if you guys can be a can become a patron. And as you can see here, I just uh, finished writing my monthly article about different ways you can make money via cryptocurrency. So, and in this month's article, I talked about practice predicting crypto trends and get paid for doing it. You can have access to all these articles for as little as $2 per month. Once again, I just want to thank all the all my current patrons right now. As you can see, these are all my current patrons. Definitely want to 
give a shout out to all of you guys for supporting me on Patreon. I want to give a shout out to Paolo. He's my latest patron, my latest two dollar patron. Thank you again for supporting me, Paolo. And again, if you guys want to support me, patreon.com slash crypto 49er. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. Peace out.